Okay, is this uh, related to the so-called younger dry ass that we see in the paleo record? It, it is, in the, in the premise of the day after tomorrow, the movie, and sort of our, our, our suspicion for some time, for decades, that this phenomenon could happen uh, is indeed based in, in part on something that really did happen, that we know uh, happened, the paleo data documented at the end of the last ice age. Uh, as all this ice was melting uh, in the northern hemisphere and it was running off in streams and rivers into the North Atlantic, into the high latitudes of the North Atlantic, where it substantially and very abruptly freshened the waters in that region. And when you freshen the waters, you make them less dense, you inhibit the sinking motion that drives that conveyor belt. And so what we think happened was that all of that melt water uh, suddenly flooding into the North Atlantic shut down. Uh, that North Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, the thermohaline circulation, the conveyor belt, denying uh, a substantial amount of, of heat that would have otherwise been be transported into the North Atlantic to higher latitudes. And there was a return to uh, somewhat glacial conditions over a large part of the Northern Hemisphere, at least regions neighboring the North Atlantic, sort of a, a sudden return to Ice Age-like conditions that lasted maybe another thousand years or so before we finally came out of the Ice Age and entered into the modern uh, warm period we call the, the Holocene, where, where there's much less ice around and where global temperatures are, are warmer than they were during the Ice Age. Now, that may not be a good analogy uh, for what we're talking about, because at the end of the last Ice Age, there was a lot of ice around. And when there's a lot of ice around and it melts rapidly, you can, you, you, you can suddenly uh, bring a very large amount of fresh water into the North Atlantic and you can really impact that circulation pattern in a way that's much more difficult tomorrow, be, uh, today because we really don't have that much ice around anymore. We have the Greenland ice sheet, um, we have the Antarctic ice sheet, but there isn't an, enough ice that is susceptible to melting rapidly now to get the sort of fresh water flooding event that drove this ancient event called the Younger Dryas and it's named after a certain type of Arctic flower that can be found in sediments and tells you that something happened at that time. Um, we're very unlikely to see a collapse that's anywhere near as dramatic um, as the collapse that we saw or a return to ice age conditions because there just isn't enough of that uh, ice around to flood the North Atlantic um, like what happened 10,000 years ago and we're warming the planet. So even if that circulation pattern were to shut down, it wouldn't actually lead to cooling except for maybe a small patch in the North Atlantic Ocean south of Greenland. The rest of the globe will continue to warm. Global warming will uh, completely overwhelm this regional cooling effect if, if that circulation pattern collapses. Um, so we are very unlikely to see anything like what we saw 10,000 years ago. But uh, again, uh, there is still uh, the uh, potential for great risk to fish populations that we rely upon, that other living things, the food web relies upon. So this would be serious. And the more rapidly it happens, the more serious it's going to be. Uh, our findings suggest that it could happen pretty rapidly.